Let's go to the tale of the tape brought to you by Game & Busters, the only place to eat, drink, play, and watch sports. You talk about the experience, but the difference between these two fighters, what really stands out to me is Gegard Mousasi has fought comfortably at 205. He has fought at heavyweight. He's very big for this weight class. Alexander Shemenko is a big 170. He's never been a big guy at 186 pounds. With the official introductions, here's Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, live on Spike, Miller Lite presents Bellator MMA from Mohegan Sun. The time has come for the main event of the evening. Three five-minute rounds in the middleweight division. Sanctioned by the Mohegan Tribe Department of Athletic Regulation, Chairman Kevin Brown, Chief of the Mohegan Tribe, Lynn Malerba, Supervising at Cage Side, Mike Mazzulli and Mike Murtha. Tonight, the main event is brought to you by Miller Lite, the original light beer. It's Miller time. And now, first, introducing the blue corner at 5 foot 11, weighing in 186 pounds. The former Bellator middleweight world champion stands with 56 professional victories, nine losses, and one no contest. Hailing from Omsk, Russia, presenting Alexander Storm Slamenko. Across the cage's adversary, tonight fighting out of the red corner at six foot two, weighing in 185.8 pounds, racking up multiple championships in route to becoming one of the world's best. Tonight, he makes his Bellator debut, bringing 42 professional victories, six defeats, and two draws. Fighting out of a leader, North South Holland, Netherlands, introducing Gegard Musasi. The referee in charge of the action, Dan Mergliata. All right, gentlemen, let's go to the center, please. All right, gentlemen, we've been through the rules of the locker room. Why don't you obey my commands at all time? Why don't you protect yourselves at all time? If you want to touch gloves, good luck doing now. Good luck to both of you. 75 finishes between them. Three five minute rounds in the Bellator MMA middleweight division. Referees Dan Mergliata. It's the main event for Bellator 185. Storm Schlemenko welcomes right, sir, Gegard Mousasi to the Bellator MMA fight. cage. The bell and round one, the fight clock brought to you by Miller Light, the original Light Gear. Cheers, it's Miller time. Mousasi in the red gloves, Schlemenko in the blue. We should mention, Jimmy, both fighters did pass their drug tests. Remember back in 2015, Schlemenko was suspended for three years after yeah. testing positive for steroids. That ban was lifted. Both have tested clean for this fight. And Flamenco to kind of push the action. He's always aggressive. I'm wondering if we'll see a takedown quick from Musasi. That's the X factor. He has a great submission game. Musasi has the added incentive of already been being promised an opportunity to face the winner of the Rafael Carvalho Alessio Sakar middleweight title fight coming up in Italy in December. Flamenco. The southpaw coming forward. Hard for the takedown. Yeah, Musasi changing levels, but Shlomenko has a very good guillotine. He's tapped out from this spot for He four. has four guillotine submission wins. And Musasi cut the angle, though. He's not going to let that happen. And Musasi has been submitted three times, including via guillotine choke. Well, that was Jacare. <laughs> That's an amazing ground game. Yeah. Incredible. Of course, he also delivered an up kick. Yeah, one and one with Jacare. Yeah. Well, here is Douglas Lima, the Bellator welterweight champion. Again, he did spend time training with Musasi in preparation for this fight. Of course, Lima preparing to face Rory McDonald for the Bellator welterweight title January 20th at the Forum in Los Angeles. Musasi kicked the pressure, Musasi laying it into the ground. And of course, the size difference apparent there, Jimmy. Yep. And we've seen Flamenco have problems in the past, including Both hooks against in. Tito Ortiz. Another neck crank. Musasi looking for the submission here in round one. What's the advantage from Flamenco? It's a position they're in. It's very hard for Musasi to really put stretch with his legs, but he's going hard for it. Half of Musasi's 12 submission wins have been via rear naked choke. Now his right eye is swollen. 
Looks well, shut, well, actually, shut. yeah. That could be why we saw such a quick takedown why he's going so hard for this submission finish. Shlomenko has been submitted four times, including once via rear naked choke. Midway point of the opening round. And yes, that right eye has to be That's a, a point of concern for Gegard Mousasi. Trying to make it a non-factor by getting the submission early. Dropping elbows now to the side of Shlomenko's head. Shlomenko doing a good job of defending blindly. And he told it was an overhand left. It opened up that eye early in the round. Swelled it shut. I'm sorry, it didn't open it up, but swelled it shut. But Musasi really putting pressure on, looking for this rear naked. Shlomenko just trying everything to defend here. Musasi riding a five-fight win streak. His previous four fights have ended via striking. Now attempting to submit Shlomenko here in round one, coming up on the final 90 seconds of the first round. Shlomenko is looking for his moment to turn. He's got to scrape oh, his... The, yep. Body triangle, that's going to be tough. It's very, very tough to do. Now Gegard going hard for it again, but he hasn't been under the chin yet. Shlomenko's got to turn to his right and try and face wow, Gegard. There he goes. So by Shlomenko. And that has to be a confidence booster. Shlomenko comes out firing. And immediately Musasi changes level, but Shlomenko defending the takedown. He is, he is not standing at all. He's diving in for the takedown from the outside. He might not have any depth perception. That right eye Good is point. swollen shut. He's diving for the takedown. Under takedowns. a minute remaining, and Musasi in a, well, almost full mount here along the fence. Yep. Oh, and feeding Shlomenko with a right uppercut. Shlomenko. Battles back to his feet, looking for the double wrist lock. Now he's doing well in this round, but a lot of this is desperation stuff from Musasi. He's not setting up a lot of stuff. And Musasi has Lomenko's back again, under 30 seconds left. Triangle! The he has an excellent triangle. That's how he beat Dennis Kane. He has two triangle choke wins on his resume. Lomenko, though, now surging with strikes. In the final 15 seconds, he's looking for the guillotine. An eventful opening five minutes between Alexander Shlomenko and Bellator MMA newcomer Gegard Mousasi. The bell in round two, Mousasi in the red gloves, Shlomenko in the blue, and you know that Shlomenko is going to try to attack that right eye if he can. This is a spinning back fist, almost gives up his back again. Got to get off the fence as well. Has to use more footwork, I think, than he's used to using. He generally moves forward and backward. He's got to angle a bit more. So Michael fighting out of a southpaw stance to lose a body kick. Because Musasi just wants to put his back against the fence and dive for the takedown. Oh, look at that. That is insane. He's falling right to his back. Will Shlomenko leap in or he won't? That's a ballsy move. The bigger, Musasi trying to keep Shlomenko at bay. Shlomenko with a left hand to the torso, and that right eye is practically sealed shut, and the spinning back fist just misses for Shlomenko. A minute gone here in the second. See the same thing, fainting for the leg. And a naked takedown defense there by Musasi didn't set it up. That's what Shlomenko needs to do. He needs to make Musasi spend energy on takedowns he's not going to get. Don't give him that one and done. He dives in and gets a takedown. But he back kick scores for Shlomenko. This is a completely different Gegard Musasi with that ice rolling shot. He is tentative. He does not want to mix it up with Shlomenko. He's trying to put him against the fence, make this a grappling match. Shlomenko can't sit against the fence like this. He can't take away his mobility. Sasi switches stances temporarily, ducks under the left hand of Shlomenko. Three minutes now remaining in the second round. How did you have it? 
I didn't get a chance to ask you. 10 9 that. Musasi in round one. Besides from the eye, I thought Musasi controlled most of the round, took his back. This round two, a different story. So far, Musasi nowhere near the ground with Shlomenko. Look at that. That was just a faint one two just to get in this kind of position. Halfway point of the round and the fight. It's Shlomenko letting himself be trapped against the fence. That's what set up that takedown. Old school foot stop there by Musasi. On a takedown, yeah, takedown attempt, I'd say. Shlomenko has to clean the center and circle. Shlomenko continues to utilize the spin. Another spinning, back spinning fist. back fist. And Musasi trips Shlomenko and has his... Trying to go for his neck, but Shlomenko doing a good job of turning in and to Musasi. Almost a high crotch position. Under two minutes left in the second. He's got to get his right arm free. Until he gets his right arm out, Gegard can spin and take his back. He has to be very conscious of that. Musasi feeding Shlomenko a couple of right hands under the armpit. Drops him to the ground. He has to pull his head and his right arm out. Can't keep Gegard Musasi there without that, because that'll happen. He'll step around and take his back. Shlomenko still not allowing Musasi to completely take his back. Now just drops down. Into the half guard now, Musasi in top position. Try to make the most of this opportunity now in side control with under a minute 17 left in the round. Couple of short elbow strikes connect for Musasi. And Slamenko grabbing onto the cage, a minute left in the round. And Shlomenko does give up his back. Just like he did in round one. We're seeing the jiu-jitsu weaknesses. Not coming close with submissions like he did in the first round. And his now he's going to his his go-to submission. He has six on his resume, looking to make it seven, but Unable to do so here with 30 seconds left in the second round. But one thing to keep in mind with the scoring is he got the, the back much later in the round than he did in round number one. He's Even attempting if, to yeah, finish. Attempting to finish, but is it enough? You're right. Effective striking, grappling. Exactly. So on and so forth. I thought Alexander Shlomenko was more effective with the striking for more of this round. We are through 10 minutes in our middleweight main event here at Bellator 185. Right. Final round, let's go, final round. Third and final round, Gegard Mousasi in his first Bellator MMA appearance in the Red Gloves. Former Bellator middleweight champion, Storm Shlomenko in the Blue Gloves. When you talked in previous fights about targeting the body, that's something Shlomenko does extremely well. Liver kick, liver punch. Loves working that right side. Back kick to the liver there by Flamenco. Sassy. It's bedeviled Flamenco throughout this fight. He's been a little lazy with his footwork, footwork in terms of his in and out and his left to right angling. He tends to go straight back, and it's cost him when Gegard Musasi has come in for that takedown. Musasi attacking the legs now with the low kicks. Nice knee. Knee by. Shlomenko. Body kick with a 35. Shlomenko in a left hand to the body. That was the end for Brandon Halsey for all those who saw that fight in Russia. Spinning back fist connects for Shlomenko. Beginning to tag Musasi here in the final round. Same thing, reaching Goes for the down, leg. Right. Yep, exactly. It's dangerous, he's committing with both hands, but it's worked. Can't do his back up to the fence like this. That's where Musasi's takedown has been effective. He doesn't have much of a center cage takedown. He's never a standout wrestler. He needs you to get against the fence to really make that takedown work. Targeting the liver over and over again. What that does that brings that elbow down, brings the hand down on that side. And he can go over top just like that. Brings a smile to Hall of Famer Waffle Bus Victor's face. 
Loves those Three shots. Three minutes left in the fight. Shlomenko picking off Musasi here in the third round. Another liver kick by Shlomenko. Musasi looking for the takedown. The Wizard defending for Shlomenko. Now, same thing as last round, right halfway through the round. That's when Shlomenko finds himself pushed against the fence. Musasi getting serious about the takedown. Halfway. Nice turn, but can't hold Two and a half minutes left in this fight. And here's where that size disparity really becomes evident. Great oh. job by Shlomenko. Take down by Shlomenko and Musashi. Going butterfly guard. Look for an elevator yep. sweep. Or he can elevate and come out the left side underneath the arm. Shlomenko's got to back off right now. Get back to the center where he was having success. Two minutes left, Musasi back on his feet. Right hand by Musasi Shlomenko out of the southpaw stance, teeing him up for that left. Oh, telegraphing a spinning attack. Since that eye has swollen shut, Musasi really hasn't had an effective stand-up attack. You see the oblique kicks. Oh, oh another good got one. caught with a left hand from Shlomenko. He can't see the strikes on that side, and that's the power side of Shlomenko. Final 90 seconds in the fight. He is Musasi blind. desperate for the takedown. On the side, he really needs oh. to see flops to his back. For that up kick that he caught Jacare with. Yes. Shlomenko this time trying to test the, the waters on the ground. Nailed Musasi in round one with the left hand almost immediately. That right eye was swollen shut. And it's definitely hindered Musasi's attack since. But Shlomenko with a minute left now. What will he decide to do here? And we've seen devastating ground and pound from Shlomenko. He doesn't seem to want to use it. Well, he just passed the guard there now. Oh, and nice knee. Back a knee to the ribs, and now in north-south position. Shlomenko looking for the guillotine. I don't know how you can give this third round to Gegard Musasi. Shlomenko's just been all over him. Under 30 seconds left in the fight. Now blood around that right eye of Gegard Musasi. 15 seconds left. On my scorecard, oh, right I, think, I think we have an upset Bob here. Shlomenko buckled Musasi momentarily. We're going to the judges' scorecards in this middleweight main event. Shlomenko coming on. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance in tonight's main event, we'll go to your three judges at cage side. Judge Doug Crosby, 29, 28. John English, 29 to 28. Derek Cleary, 29 to 28. All three judges have it for the winner by unanimous decision. Gengo Musashi. Thin split decision win for gay guard Musasi. You hear the crowd. Let's go to Jimmy Smith. I'm here with your winner, gay guard Musasi. Gay guard, that is one tough Bellator debut. Closed up the eye in the first round. Was that a big factor in the fight? Yeah, 100%. But uh, he's a big puncher. 2 to 1. Moving forward, I know you want a title shot at 185. You seem frustrated, you seem upset. What's on your mind, man? Well, it was a, I had a lot of pressure coming in, but uh, yeah, the eye shut down. I had to fight on uh, instincts. Well, those instincts proved to be just enough, man. We'll see you again in the Bellator cage. Gay guard Musasi, ladies and gentlemen. Well, with one eye, gay guard Musasi survives, wins. A razor-thin split decision in his Bellator MMA debut. We are set for the tail of the tape for the main event at Bellator 200, the middleweight championship fight. Everything is very similar, but look at the experience of Gegar Musasi. That's the difference in this fight. With the official introductions here once again is Michael C. Williams.
Ladies and gentlemen, Miller Lite presents Bellator 200 on Paramount Network from London, England. The time has come for the main event of the evening. Five five-minute rounds for the Bellator Middleweight World Championship. Sanctioned by the Mohegan Tribe, Department of Athletic Regulation Chairman Kevin Brown. Chief of the Mohegan Tribe is Lynn Malerba. Supervising at cage side, Mr. Mike Mazzulli. Tonight's main event brought to you by Miller Lite. Great taste and only 96 calories. And now, first, introducing the blue corner. At six foot two, weighing in 185 pounds even, the former Dream and Strike Force world champion enters tonight's world title fight with 43 professional victories, six defeats, and two draws. Hailing from Liederdorf, South Holland, Netherlands, ladies and gentlemen, the challenger, Gekko Lusasi. And across the cage, the champion tonight fights out of the red corner. At six foot three, weighing in 185 pounds, even tonight in his fourth defense of the title, he enters with a near perfect professional record of 15 wins, just one defeat. From Curitiba, Barana, Brazil, introducing the defending Bellator middleweight world champion, Rafael Nobles Cavallo. And when the bell rings, the referee in charge of the action, Dan Mergliata. Thank you, sir. All right, gentlemen, been through the rules in the locker room. I want you to obey my commands at all time. I want you to protect yourselves at all time. It's a five round fight for the title. You want to touch gloves? Do it now. Good luck to both of you. Dan Mergliata, the referee here at SSC Arena Wembley. The main event of Bellator 200. Gegard Mousasi, 36 of his 43 wins inside the distance. Rafael Caballo, the fourth middleweight Red. champion, Let's making go. his fourth title defense. The champion Caballo in the red gloves, the challenger Musasi in the blue gloves. Musasi told us that Caballo's height and length was the only two things that really gave him pause. Well, in talking with him, the one thing he said is, look at, I know he's dangerous, I know he's long, I know he's powerful, but I know how to fight him. And that was the confidence that he brought into this. So we're gonna see, does he know how to fight this guy? London crowd chanting Musasi. Gegard Musasi has fought all over the world for almost, well, I believe he's fought for every major promotion that has existed in mixed martial arts. Think about it, Moro. Strike Force champion, dream middleweight and light heavyweight champion. Two he and has, one in pride. And now Musasi explodes for the takedown. And Caballo will try to get back up to his feet as quick as possible because you do not want to mess with Musasi on the ground. No, this is a big, important moment right now. Does Caballo get back to his feet? Good. Caballo gets back to his feet. That's very impressive, but he still has Gegard on his back, and he's going to bring him right back down. And Caballo, remember, in his professional debut, suffered a anaconda choke submission, but he's reeled off 15 consecutive victories since, and Caballo now looking for a standing Kimura, but he's taken down face first by Musasi. Beautiful outside trip and how he did that. That was beautiful, Moro. That was an impressive takedown by Gegard. Caballo is using actually a lot of energy holding that way, but he's doing it in a very calm and efficient manner. And he's just working here, which is impressive because Gegard is good everywhere when it comes to the grappling range. First of a possible five five minute rounds for the Bellator MMA middleweight championship. Go behind by Musasi with the waist lock. He'll try to drag Caballo back to the ground. Normally in those positions, we say high head wins, but Kegard came from a low head position, got his head on top, gets on top, Cavallo. Just past the midpoint of the opening round. Cavallo controlling 
was attempting to control Musasi's posture. Musasi in the full mount. Dire straits for the Bellator MMA middleweight champion. And this is what we were talking about, the experience of Gegard. He's so calm when he fights, and he doesn't rush anything. He takes his time and moves himself now into the mount. You're going to see that he takes his time in this position. What does Cavajo do to start to get him out of the mount? That's going to say a lot. I would like to measure Musasi's heartbeat right now. It is incredible at how calm he truly is and, and just systematically breaking down Caballo. Caballo just wanting to stay as close to Musasi as he can. Neck crack attempt here and Musasi feeding Caballo right hands. You saw the lace with the left hands. Oh, the crowd and pound from the back by Gago Musasi. Biggest thing is he's not being able to move. Gago no, Musasi, no, no, no. it's the game. There is a new Bellator MMA middleweight champion, and his name is, well, let Michael C. Williams take it from here. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, it comes to an end officially. Three minutes, 35 seconds into round number one. The winner by TKO, and now the new Bellator middleweight world champion, Gago. Musasi. He improves to 44, 6 and 2 with his 25th victory of Via Forma knockout. The new champ is standing by with Big John. I am here with the new Bellator middleweight champion, Gegar Musasi. How does that feel, brother? It feels good. I worked hard for this. Um, I want to thank my coaches, my trainers, my friends. All my friends that came, all the audience that came, thank you. Making time, spending the money to come to, uh, to watch the fights. Thank you very much. You did such a beautiful job of relaxing inside the cage. When you got him down with the outside trip and you had his back, did you know that you were in position that you were gonna be able to keep him there so for you to win the fight? Well, it was a five round. I was thinking it could go five rounds, but I, I fight with the rest of the heavy guys, so my strength is up to there. Once I, I'm on top position, I'm, uh, I'm good, I think. <laughs> You're good. You are the first fighter that's ever had the Strike Force light heavyweight title, Dream Middle and Light Heavy, and now the Bellator middleweight title. Who is it that you think it should get that next shot at this title? I think everyone wants to see Rory McDonald. Hopefully he doesn't chicken out and uh, we have a fight. Sounds good to me, everyone. The new middleweight champion, gay guard, Dreamcatcher Musasi. Let's go to the tail of the tape for this mega main event champion versus champion. Look at all those fights. Look at all those victories. Look at that reach. Doesn't matter who's taller, both the same. This is going to be a battle. And with the official introductions for tonight's Final fight, let's go to Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, Bellator MMA from SAP Center tonight, live on DAZN. The time has come for the super fight. It is our main event of the evening. Five five-minute rounds for the Bellator Middleweight World Championship. Sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission, Commissioner John Carmelli, Chair, Executive Officer at Cage Side, Mr. Andy Foster. And now, first introducing the blue corner. At six foot, weighing in 184.9 pounds in his quest to hold a second world title, the reigning Bellator welterweight world champion enters the cage with 20 professional victories, four defeats. Hailing from Montreal, Quebec, Canada, presenting the challenger, Rory the Red King, McDonald. And across the cage, the champion fights out of the red corner at six foot two, weighing in 184.4 pounds. The three time world champion tonight makes the first defense of his Bellator title, bringing an outstanding professional record of 44 victories, six losses, and two draws. From Liederdorf, South Holland, Amsterdam, ladies and gentlemen, the defending Bellator middleweight world champion. 
the Sassy. And when the bell rings, the referee in charge of the action, Herb Dean. Gentlemen, we've been over the rules. Protect yourself at all times. Follow my instructions. We're gonna keep it clean. Touch gloves, let's do it. Herb Dean, the referee, as gay guard Musasi and Rory McDonald get set to try to produce MMA's Mona Lisa. Two champions in their prime. It really doesn't get Ready much better Ready. than Good. this. The bell and round one. McDonald in the blue gloves. Musasi in the red gloves. What do you look forward to early on in this fight, John? I look for Rory McDonald to try to establish that jab. He's got to establish the jab to get the respect of Gegard Musasi to stand up. Well, Musasi possesses one of the best jabs in the sport. He does. Should be a highly technical affair, but Rory McDonald, who, again, a blood and guts warrior who will ever forget the rematch against Robbie Lawler for the UFC welterweight title. I thought Rory McDonald's career was finished after that fight. Boy, is it proven all of us wrong. Coming back undefeated in Bellator and already the Bellator welterweight champ. He has, Looking to make his He has rebounded so well in coming to Bellator and with the way he is fighting now is the best he has oh, fought. That was a great right, right hand, hand by Musashi. Tag McDonald. My mind, if you're Rory, you want to do exactly what he's doing right now. Start to give him some angles, start to move around. Don't set your feet too often. If you set your feet, he's going to gauge that distance and he's going to strike. Two of the best collecting data, making adjustments on the fly, and, and the, the cage IQ off the charts for both fighters. Oh, absolutely. And Gegard is the one you look at. He is so adept at changing during the fight. That's what's so impressive about Gegard Musasi. Jab outside low leg kick by Rory McDonald, who again representing the story tri star gym in Montreal. The Zero George St. Pierre, and you see similarities in their fighting approach. Perra Sahabi, one of the best trainers in his corner, and Musasi, well, has a gym on his property in the Netherlands, following the footsteps of his older brother, who was a fighter, but I remember meeting Musasi early in his career in Japan when he fought for Pride Fighting Championships and already showing signs of what to come as McDonald clocked Musasi with that right hand and Musasi didn't flinch. Uh, he flinched a little bit, but he, he just looked and said like, oh, let me give you one back. But that's what Rory has to do. He has to give him something to feel to get that respect. McDonald attacking the body with a left hook. McDonald checked that kick, but then eats another stiff jab from Musasi. And another, you said it exactly, stiff. That popped his head back. He looked like a Pez dispenser. Oh, I like that line. I've heard that before somewhere. And again, Musasi beginning to establish the jab. There's a sweeping left hook. Oh, that kick was blocked. And Musasi are starting to find a rhythm, putting his strikes together under two minutes remaining in the first round. That's exactly, you're exactly right with what you're looking at. Gegard is starting to get a rhythm. Rory is not actually in a rhythm right now. He's trying to find that rhythm. He's struggling a little bit in the fight. Gegard is and he needs success. Man, that straight right hand the second time in this opening round that he's cracked McDonald. If you're having this kind of problem in the stand-up right now, you might want to start to change it up and make Gegard think about something else. Even a takedown attempt as far as just faking it. Make him start to move his feet and think, oh, he's thinking about that attempt. Sassi walking down McDonald, shoots the jab. McDonald tries to... Maybe attempt to take down, but was stopped, and that jab is just really already highly effective weapon for Musashi. That jab right now is a difference in this fight. He is controlling the distance. He's controlling exactly where that pace is at. And that's what he has to do in order to win this fight. You got it. The other part of that is 
it's not just a jab. We're talking, this is a damaging jab. It's a power jab, Manny Pacquiao, same thing. Exactly. 30 seconds left in the opening round. A good start for the Bellator MMA middleweight champion, Gegard Mousasi. But again, Roy McDonald used to taking the opening rounds, wanting to collect the data, see what Mousasi's all about. One of the things that is in the book about trying to beat Roy McDonald is make him move backwards, and that's what Gegard's doing right now. Thanks to a highly effective jab, a great start for Gegard Mousasi in this super fight. Bell in round number two. How do you score the first fight on your unofficial scorecard, John? Well, the first, first round, I should say, yeah, first fight. It's okay. It is their first fight, you're right. I had no doubt, 10-9. Gegar Musasi established that jab. He's the one controlling this fight right now. Rory's gonna have to change what he's doing, or things are not gonna get better for him. How does McDonald secure a path to the takedown? Because we know that despite improvements, Musasi's takedown defense isn't the best. It was evident when he fought King Mola Wall strike force, taken down 11 times. That's when he knew, I have to work on this part of the game, and he has. He has, and he's good at wow. it. But if you're looking at Rory McDonald, you have to say you've got to start establishing the ability to get that takedown. Like oh, and now! McDonald attempting the takedown, but it's Musasi delivering elbows, and now Musasi inside the guard of Rory McDonald. I talked to Gegard about Rory possibly trying to slide underneath, go to a 50-50, and Gegard said, what's a 50-50? <laughs> and you look and you go, you know, everyone knows things in different ways, but Rory will not always try the conventional takedown. He's going to try those things. And his idea is, if he's underneath Gegard, I just need to monitor the damage that I allow him to inflict. As long as, work. as long as he knows who 50 Cent is, it's okay, though, right? <laughs> I, 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 well, no, he's not part of that. Thing, no, no, that's right. right but he wants to uh, maintain the strap. 3.30 left in the second round. McDonald off his back. Again, the this prodigy who got interested in MMA when his dad started showing him old the UFC fights when he was 14 years of age. Really a first generation mixed martial artist. Turned pro at the age of 16. And ate a stiff, sharp elbow. Couple more elbows from Musasi. Big elbows inside by Gegard. And this is when we talked about Gegard's top game. He is a damaging fighter from the top. His ground and pound is vicious. Musasi remaining active from the close. Now open guard, a close guard again of McDonald. McDonald trying to control the posture, trying to force a stand up or maybe trying to secure a submission. He's trying to work things out. You see him opening that guard, then going back to a close, but he's trying to change the angle. He's having a hard time controlling the posture of Gegard. Musasi's been submitted three times in his career, but it's all about the ground and pound. Now a wide base, and there's McDonald controlling or keeping Musasi. Look at that slice through right yep. there, right into half guard. Beautiful slice by Gegard Musasi, and he's actually trying to go down. Oh, right to full mount. Has mounted Rory McDonald here in round two, and McDonald trying to hold on. See him taking his hips, bringing him up high on Rory McDonald's chest. This is a bad position wow. for Rory. Rory was mounted by Damian Maya, but Damian Maya doesn't have the strikes that Gabriel Musasi has. Wow, Red Rory King. Is in trouble. And Musasi treating the Red King is like the victors of the Red Wedding. He's a man left in round two. Championship stopping Rory McDonald. Here comes Rory, rolls in for that, trying to get Gegard down. He does. But in getting him down, brings himself into a position where he did not expect that he was not going to be able to stop that ground and pound. You watch Kegard slice into half guard, gets to full mount. These are heavy shots, heavy elbows. You see Rory trying to move. He cannot break that heavy hip position of Kegard Musasi. 
and Gegard is just launching elbows into him. Are you at all surprised at how this fight unfolded, John? No, I'm not. We talked about this, and I, and I looked at both fighters, and when I look at Gegard Mousasi, he does everything that Rory McDonald does, and sometimes just a little bit better with more experience. That experience leads him to that victory. And that is the biggest reason he won tonight? I do think so. You know, it's a matter of when you have fought all of these different guys and you've been in with the Jacarees and you've been in with the Mark Hunts, guys that hit huge, guys that have great submission games, and you learn from those fights like Gegard has, he has made himself an extremely impressive mixed martial artist. Musashi cementing his legacy. A champion in multiple promotions and returning to San Jose where he became Strikeforce Light Heavyweight Champion and now well, in his maiden voyage as middleweight kingpin knocks off Bellator welterweight champion Rory McDonald in highly impressive fashion. And yet again, kudos to McDonald for daring to be great. And now we'll have to see how McDonald will recover and then prepare to meet John Fitch in the Bellator welterweight Grand Prix where McDonald's 170 pound title will be up for grabs. But tonight, it's all about Gegard Mousasi, the Bellator MMA middleweight champion. Let's go to Michael C. Williams to make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, referee Herb Dean steps in, waves off the contest due to unanswered strikes. Official time, three minutes, 23 seconds into round number two. The winner by TKO and still Bellator middleweight World Champion, Gegard Musasi. Let's go to Big John McCarthy. Scott Coker congratulating Gegard Musasi. What a victory. John, take it away. Gegard Musasi, congratulations on an incredibly impressive performance against an incredible fighter in Rory McDonald, stepping up to try to take your belt how are you feeling right now? Much respect to Rory. Um, I like him a lot. Phenomenal fighter, phenomenal guy, uh, family guy. I can say good things about Rory. And um, thanks for, the, for the taking the fight and making this a super fight for Bellator. In the first round, you established your jab. And you started hitting him with a very stiff jab that started snapping his head back. What was the point that you knew that you had him in trouble in this fight as far as you were the one dominating the action in the fight? Well, I knew I had better stand up. I had the reach advantage. I felt like I had the speed advantage. So the goal was to keep it stand up, make him uh, panic and go for the takedowns and take it over. Once he tried to shoot for underneath your legs, we talked about that before, that 50-50 he was scrambling for, you got position, you sliced through the half, then you sliced right over into Mount. Once you got Mount, did you know that you had him? I think so. I think so. I had heard him a little bit already. And um, yeah, it went perfect. This is the fight that I needed. And uh, I think next is Lovato. And then Mashida, if he wins, with a lot of drug testing for Mashida. And then we fight him. So you're saying that Rafael, we are Rafael Lovato Jr., who is now undefeated, he just beat John Salter. That should be your next opponent, in your opinion. I think he deserves it. I want to fight him. And then when December Mashida fights, April, I will be ready for him if he wins. But I'm not going to wait six months for Mashida. Well, all I can say is that was an incredibly impressive performance against a great champion in Rory McDonald. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, Gegard Mousasi. Here's the tale of the tape for our second main event of the evening, Lyoto Machida against Gegard Mousasi. You can see by those records how successful and special both guys are. That reach difference, that 76 inch reach with that jab, that's a big, that's a big thing for Gegard to use as a weapon. Here is Michael C. Williams. Bellator MMA live on the zone from the fabulous Forum the time has come for our second main event of the evening. Three five minute rounds in the middleweight division. Sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission. Commissioner John Carpentley Chair. Executive Officer is Andy Foster. 
And now, first, introducing the blue corner. At six foot two, weighing in 186 pounds even, the former Dream Strike Force and Bellator World Champion brings an incredible professional record with 45 wins, seven losses, and two draws. By way of the Leonor P fights out of Amsterdam, Netherlands, presenting Geko Mustasi. And across the cage is Atmosphere, fighting out of the red corner. At six foot one, weighing in 186 pounds, the former light heavyweight world champion tonight enters with 26 professional victories, eight defeats. By way of Lomita, California, he fights out of Belém, Para Brazil, introducing Moyoto, the Dragon Machida. In charge of the action, Mike Beltran. So guys, bring it in. All right, don't get over the rules already. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Touch goes now if you want. At the sound of the bell, come on up. Handle your business. Let's go. Three five-minute rounds scheduled here in the middleweight division. Our second main event of the night, gate guard Musasi in his 55th professional fight. Leota Machida. Set to All right, gentlemen, begin his 35th fight. pro contest. Fight. Let's go. Referee Mike Beltran calls for the bell. Machida, the red gloves, Musasi in the blue. Machida out of the South Pass dance, and Machida really is. Well, I want to say Karate Kid, but at uh, 41, John, maybe not so much as a kid. Well, he's the dragon, that's for sure. The one thing about Leoto is he's very fast with his kicks because he doesn't do a setup, he just swings into it. That makes it hard to deal with and hard to see. Musasi admitting that Machida was just better than him when they met five years ago. Machida, Musasi said that he was following Machida too much, which is exactly what Machida wanted. Now, Musasi not making any excuses, but was coming off a long layoff going into their first fight because he had an ACL injury. Well, one of the things, if you just saw that first kick by Leoto, what you saw Gegard doing is he's trying to sweep the leg past him. It's almost like the Matador sweeps the bull past him. If he's able to do that, he's going to put Leoto in a position where he cannot attack, and you're going to see Gegard blasting him with the right hand. Oblique kick attempt by Musasi Machida, the only fighter in UFC history to earn two knockout victories, stemming from a front kick to the face. Last fight in the octagon, he vanquished Vitor Belfort. And of course, he also beat the legendary Randy Couture, sending Couture into retirement. So uh, Musasi has to be cognizant of the fact that Machida, he can kick from many different angles, John. That he can. And he's got power. Oh, but the right hand counter clip Machida. He has definitely. Musasi getting Machida's attention here in the opening round. Six of Musasi's 45 wins have come via form of knockout. The crowd at the forum chanting Musasi. And I'm sure there's a few chanting for Machida as well. Two of the most accomplished fighters in all of MMA. You see Machida with that nice hip pain. He sits there and twitches his hip. Counter accommodation by Musasi. That is exactly what Gegard needs to do every time. There is movement towards closing of that distance. Gegard needs to unload on him. Machida, black belt in BJJ and Shotokan Karate. It's a family affair for the Machidas. Machida's ground game is outstanding, but, but I he hasn't won by submission since well, 2007. There is a distinct difference in the ground games of Leota Machida and Gegard Musasi. What is the biggest difference, John? The pressure that Gegard creates. He is able to create a heavy pressure when he's on top, and his defense, if he is taken down, is outstanding. Taking a 
A while to renew acquaintances here in the opening round. They went five rounds the last time, five years ago, but only three rounds to get it done here tonight. They are not allowing Ryota to breathe as far as that distance. Ryota, you see, trying to create a distance to collect the breath. Gegard immediately shuffling his feet straight into him, putting the pressure back on. And Musashi encouraging Machida to come forward. And Machida launches the head kick blocked by Musashi. Oh, and counter shot there, the straight left down the pipe by Machida. Coming up on the final minute of the first round. Lead low kick by Musashi. Anytime you see Leota Machida coming forward on Gegard, you know Gegard is not doing what he needs to do to win this fight. He has got to continue to maintain that at least even pressure, if not forward movement. Musashi trading out of the Burt Cox gym in the Netherlands. Machida, representing Machida Karate and Black House. Of course, Black House, he trains with the likes of former UFC heavyweight champion Fabricio Verdun and that Michelle Prezeris, who's quite the flamboyant fighter, but as we close out the opening round, we will head to round number two. Stop. All right, gentlemen, second round. Red fight, red fight, hell, let's go. The bell in round two. Yoda Machida in the red gloves. Gegard Musashi in the blue gloves. Nice movement by Gegard to cut that movement of Machida off. Take not only the step to the side, but also a little bit of a step forward. Machida is so hard to deal with because he's lulling you into attacking him because he wants to counter. He looks open, but then he creates that little bit of space that makes you miss, and then immediately Obliquely. closes and touches you with a shot. By Musashi. Neither wants to lead the dance, John. Why is exactly it? Both of them are afraid of the counter of the others. Leoto's trying to set little traps, giving him movements. Look at the hit and twitch that'll give. Little movements like, I'm going to do something because he's wanting Gegard to think that that attack is coming. So he throws so Leoto can get, come out with his counter. Talk about the kicking strategy of Musashi and the way he is uh, trying to attack the lead leg of the southpaw. There's what I'm talking about with that. Nice little matadoring of the leg to bring the right hand. And there's Musashi. Beautiful. Usulator strikes, moving in. And again, no Backing up coming right after him quickly. Trying to create that, keeping that pressure on Machida. What do you think of the oblique kicks, John? I like the oblique kicks. I know there's a lot of guys that don't sit there and say, oh my god, the knee. We allow people to punch and kick people to the head. The head is the most precious thing we have. I can deal with an oblique kick anytime. Don't hit me to the head, don't kick me to the head. I'll be a great fighter. Under three minutes left in the middle frame. And the fuse yet to be lit in this middleweight main event. Inside leg kick by Musasi. Machida switching back to southpaw. And when Machida switches to that southpaw, you should see Musasi now attack him oh. with that, that right kick to the body. It right is open for him. By Musasi that he threw. Just past the midpoint of the round and the fight. Just like Machida just threw that left kick to the body of Musasi, Musasi needs to start utilizing that right kick to Machida's body in that southpaw position. Now Machida has 11 knockouts and two submission wins, but Likes to espouse the karate mentality in that point fighting, John. Well, he, he's always in the position of, I want you to think there's an opening. I want you to think you can attack. And he's going to counter off. Well, someone has to attack. Two minutes left in the second. And the crowd trying to 
get behind trying to light these fighters up here at the Forum in Los Angeles. And now Musasi again. There's the kick by Majida. Tell Frank Shamrock that who had his arm shattered by Kung Lee in San Jose, California. And there's a difference between yes. someone hitting solid and just slipping by. Yeah, a minute and a half left in the second. People have told me that I have commitment issues, John. I, I believe that Machida and Musasi might have the same problem. Oh, well, and, you know, look, this is, here's the difference. You just watched in his last fight, the other Machida fight, Chael Sonnen. Yep. Chael Sonnen is always known as a guy that comes forward, pressure fighter. And that's why he earned a lot of big fights. Absolutely. But it also earned him a knee to the chin. And sent him into retirement, but uh, the fighting loss is broadcast gain. And that's what happens when you fight Leona. He blows you into wanting to come after him. So Gegard is trying to be technically sound but, he, when he's coming forward. And there's Machida with the left of Machida with a body kick counter left from Musasi. And in the final 25 seconds, let's see if they start to bring the fight to each other. Counter right hand by Musasi. Musasi's taking his eyes off of Machida at times, and that's not a good thing. If you're gonna dip that head, my eyes gotta be on my target. The third and final round coming up here from the Forum in L.A. Stop! <laughs> Andrew Simon, formerly of Access TV, a man who gave me an opportunity to call New Japan Pro Wrestling. Can't wait for Wednesday in X2. But here we go, third and final round of this fight. All right, gentlemen, third and final round. Ready to fight. Ready to fight. Hell, that referee as we got Leona Machida the red gloves, Musasi in the blue gloves. Five minutes to settle the score. Can Musasi avenge the loss or will Machida make it too straight against the dream catcher? I really believe whoever takes this round is going to take the fight. They both have to open up, decide I got to go for this. Nice movement, but nothing happened. So far, their offense has been hermetically sealed. <laughs> There's a body kick in the counter by Musasi. You can see how Leota stance. He's got that lean to the rear, and that is making Musasi not throw that left hand because he's figuring, I'm going to throw it, and he's out of range for me. I gotta move too much with my feet to get that thing to land. That free sage uh, maybe an attempt at that front kick to the face as Musasi goes for the oblique kick. There was a front kick to the body of Musasi, maybe gauging the distance. Gauging the distance, but definitely not going. Keeps on doing the little stomp to the top of Musasi's foot. Little kick to that ankle area, stepping on his foot. When he's stepping on his foot, that's smart because it makes as you try to retreat, now you get elongated out. You get hit with a shot, it's going to put you down. It's the Machina chants that resonate around the forum here in Los Angeles. Just a chess match. Both guys wanting to throw at times, looking for that opportunity, just isn't not a, seeing it. Isn't there a timer in some chess matches? <laughs> you gotta make a move? On some games. Yes. And Musasi continues to deliver the oblique kick, but it doesn't seem to have any effect on Machida thus far. No, but yeah, and really, I think the problem is that Musasi has taken most of his kicks out of the equation here. He's mostly Body fighting kick. this like a stand-up boxer. Liver kick there by Machida. Now low kick. And 
there. Precisely coming in, head down, swinging wildly. Well, touched him. Ramachuda tags Musasi under two minutes left in the fight. Musasi, Machida trips. Musasi comes with the right. Machida says, okay, let's go. Well, let's go. Oh, you know what? It takes two to tango. He's got to bring it. Oh, it's a kick look. Musasi has Machida on the ground, and now Musasi in the ground. Open guard of Machida. He's got to, okay, yes, he's attacking the side of the head, wrapping around those shots. Minute and a half left in the fight. What can Musasi do to maximize the top position working from the close guard of Machida? Right now he needs to think about keeping his hands off of that canvas, put his hands towards the biceps and shoulders of Machida, create space, posture, and start to do damage with big shots. Final 60 seconds of our co-main event. Middleweight rematch between Lyoto Machida and Gegard Musasi. <laughs> Musasi holds seven wins over former UFC Strike Force or Bellator champions. Final 30 seconds. They are trying to create a posture move. You see, Machida looking for the guillotine. The Don't believe he has it, but this attempt could be the difference in this round, Laurel. And Musasi has been submitted three times, including the guillotine jump. He is fine right now. You see him blinking. He's trying to control the hand. There is pressure, but not enough to get him to stop. And it goes the distance. With Machida looking for the guillotine choke at the end, Musasi helping him to his feet, they embrace. But it will be up to the three judges chosen by the California State Athletic Commission to render their decision as to who will win this rematch. How do you have it after three rounds on your unofficial scorecard? No, I had it where I had it even going to the last, and you know, that was very close in the stand-up. It goes to the ground. Leoto's the one that actually landed more as far as volume and shots, and that guillotine attempt. At the end, it's fairly tight. That's the that's the most telling part of the round. I'm going with Leona Machida. Just action to the fight. Here's Musasi going after him. He lands that left hand and then a right on top. Leg kick that puts him down, that's off balance. You see Machida going right back with Masasi trying to land shots. Wasn't able to land anything off of it. Here comes Machida with this kick up high. Boom, that landed solid. He ends up going down from it, but that kick did land. And from this position, you see Machida opening up with some strikes, going after the guillotine choke. It's the closest thing that had the possibility of ending this fight. But the fight ends after three rounds, and so we await the judges' verdict. Let's find out who is going to be popping a bottle of La Chamin du Roi. Here is Michael C. Williams with the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, for the decision, we'll go to your judges' scorecards. Your first judge, Michael Bell, scores the fight 29-28. He sees the fight for Machida. Your second judge at Cape Side, Ron McCarthy, scores the fight 29-28. He sees the fight for Musasi. Your third and final judge, Luis Colbian, scores the fight 30, 27, 
He has it for the winner by split decision. Gegard Musasi. So Gegard Musasi evens the score against Lyoto Machida via split decision. Musasi picking up his 46th career victory. Let's go to Big John McCarthy. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with the winner, Gegard Musasi. Gegard, that was a very tight, close fight. You were both trying to get angles on each other. What were you thinking in there against him this time? Well, he's a crafty. He, I had to fight this way. I couldn't take a lot of risk. Uh, I neutralized him, and uh, I had to fight like this. I couldn't do it. I in, couldn't, in, one of the, in one of the last sequences, you got hit with a head kick, but he was off balance. You ended up on top. And how tight was that guillotine attempt? He didn't hit me with the kick. Uh, guillotine was tight, but nothing that I would have tapped for. If given the opportunity, who is it that you're looking at next? Do you want a rematch with Lovato, or is there someone else out there you want to fight? Oh, it's going to be Lovato next fight. For sure. Lovato next fight? 100%. Sounds good to me. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for the man, Gegard Musasi. Our tale of the tape for this, our main event, of the evening, Big John, look at those numbers. You look at those numbers and what it, it says one word, Goldie, experience. Both guys are outstanding fighters with a ton of experience. A ton of experience, a ton of talent, and a ton of desire to leave as the middleweight champion. Here is Michael C. Williams. Bellator MMA Live on CBS Sports Network from Mohegan Sun Arena, the time has come for the main event of the evening. Five five-minute rounds for the vacant Bellator Middleweight World Championship. Sanctioned by the Mohegan Tribe Department of Athletic Regulation, Chairman James Gessner, President of Sports and Entertainment, Tom Cantone, Chief of the Mohegan Tribe, Lynn Malerva, and Supervising at Cage Side Director, Mike Mazzulli. And now, First, introducing the blue corner at six foot one, weighing in 184.9 pounds in a quest to hold two world titles, the reigning Bellator welterweight champion enters tonight with 32 professional victories, seven losses. From Goiania, Goiás, Brazil, he fights out of Atlanta, Georgia, Douglas, the Phenom Lima. And across the cage is adversary, fighting out of the red corner at six foot two, weighing in 184.9 pounds, having accumulated multiple titles in a marquee career. Tonight, in an attempt to regain the Bellator title, he enters with 46 professional victories, seven defeats, two draws. By way of Liederdorf, he fights out of Amsterdam, Netherlands, introducing Gekard Musasi. In charge of the action, your referee, Dan Mergliato. All right, gentlemen, been to the rules of the locker room. Once to be on my commands at all time, we take yourselves at all time. If you want to touch gloves, do it now. Back to your corners, good luck. <coughs> the Bellator middleweight belt will go to the victor. Gay Guard Musasi. Douglas Lima. Fight schedule right, for ready, five. Ready, five sir. minute round. Go, Here we go. Tonight's fight clock presented by Geico Musasi in the red gloves, Lima in the blue gloves. Lima told us he is at That's about the same weight as he enters the Bellator cage when he fights at welterweight, around 200 pounds. He did a lot of power lifting. He thinks his kicks will be more lethal at 185. Very interesting to see that Gegard is crushing that space, Josh. He's bringing it more into a boxing range than a kickboxing range to limit that kick right there. One of the best fight IQs in the game is Gegard Musasi. Yep. Got his hands locked. This is a good time for him to be able to get a takedown. Can he do it with Lima? Because he is tough to get down. 
Douglas Lima earned his black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu from his longtime coach, Juan Carnero, who is in his corner tonight back in 2014. You know, Goldie, sometimes when guys of this magnitude are fighting, you just gotta. <laughs> this is. I'm just like. I'm just glued to my. I just can't get my hands off this man. Oh, nice job of taking the back. Let's we'll see if Douglas can. Yeah. Gegard had a nice position. Gets him down. He's got that head high, which can hold Douglas Lima in this position right now. Oh, he's got the double wrist control there. He's gonna start trying to stand up now and maybe start to get his left leg free. He's got to be very careful, lifting his chin up to listen to his corner. He is real sneaky at getting that arm right into that. Musasi's last win by submission was back in 2014. A rear naked choke on Mark Munoz. Mark Munoz unable to counter that. It has been a long time since Lima has been stopped. A dozen years. You don't want to settle in this position if you're Douglas Lima. You can see that Musasi's got Douglas Lima's left wrist. He finally got it free. Colorado State, Fresno State, coming up right here on CBS Sports Network after our main event. Douglas is doing a, a nice job of remaining calm and patient in this, but he's got to get to a point where he decides, all right, I'm getting up. Here it comes. Oh, our double champion, Patricio Pico, of course, a proud Brazilian. Thinks a Brazilian is going to walk away with another piece of Bellator gold. He certainly hopes so. This is not where you want to be with Gegard Mousasi. We've seen him with the top guys, uh, Rafael Lovato Jr. When he got on top, this is where all the damage was done against him as well in their title fight. One of the things that Gegard is outstanding, watch his hip position when he's in the top here. You'll see him forcing his hips forward, super heavy, and gets position where he can bring a lot of power on his shots. In that fight with Rafael Lovato Jr., he did all of his work, I believe it was at the end of the third round. Rafael Lovato Jr. stood up after that, a bloody mess after that round. This is not where you want to be in it. This is also too at the beginning of the end for Rory McDonald when the fight got to the ground. A little bit of a head clash there. Gegard came down, got warned by Dan Mergulata about watching his head. A shout out to the former champion, Rafael Lovato Jr. Unfortunately, for medical reasons, had to cut his career way too short. But a class act in an unbelievable mixed martial art. Just an unbelievable Brazilian Jiu Jitsu practitioner. Came into MMA undefeated throughout his career. He was remarkable. But John, we've seen this in the past with, with Douglas Lima. He likes to hang on to the guard position, and this is what cost him the fight against Roy McDonald. Also, he got horse caught in, the, in their third fight. He had hung out in the guard a couple times after not stopping the takedown, but he should have been trying to get back to his feet. Now that, that was actually when he lost the title to both. You're talking about it. Korshkov in the first fight he had with Korshkov had a bad knee and ended up where he was utilizing the guard and crossing his legs and holding the fighter in his position. He cannot do that. He talked about, John, how he took a beating in that fight against Korshkov back in 2015. Break! Watch, watch what happens here, Josh. You'll see Gegard brings his head down, almost a clash. It really doesn't hit Lima in the head, but you cannot use your head in any fashion as a striking instrument. It doesn't matter if it's head to head, head to chest. You cannot do that, that's illegal. John, are you sure you know the rules? No. <laughs> he wrote them, but at this point, at his age, he forgot most of it. Yes. Round two. Round one to Musasi, I would imagine to John. I think so. I'm just saying. There's that very first kick right there. Uh, Gegard was able to actually just wiggle his foot right out of the way. Well, Gegard checks kicks, and he doesn't get kicked a lot overall by anybody, so Lima says, we might go high a few times. Keep a lookout. 
to that possibility. I personally think you know, one of the things I brought out in my keys to victory, Douglas Lehman needs to keep his back off of the cage, and he is making a huge mistake by putting himself in this position. That black ring that you see, that's what he should be inside of. Lopsided numbers in the first five minutes, to say the least. But what, what you'll see from Gegard is just the complete relaxation. This is the way he fights, and this is why I think he doesn't get the credit he deserves. He waits for his opponent to make a mistake, and at the same time, he looks so relaxed and calm as he waits for them to make a mistake, and then he destroys them. He's lethal. In a shorter version, yes. <laughs> 46 career wins. That was a nice leg kick by Douglas Lima, but it was a good counter by Gegard. Gegard did tell us that he plans on utilizing his wrestling in this matchup. Lima acknowledged that he knows that that is the case and worked a lot on his defensive wrestling in this game. John, I know that Lima has always been considered a really big uh, welterweight, but I gotta tell you, he looks equal to the same size. And I know that we were saying like 205, 203 is what Gegard's gonna come in and Lima will come in at 197, 199, somewhere in there. But, ooh, that was nice. They look very similar in size. They are very similar in size. If you look at their frames, I would say Gegard's maybe an inch taller, but you know, you're looking at the shoulder structure of Lima, he's wider. Guys, when we talked to him earlier in the week, he did say that his weight would it's pretty much be the same on fight night as it is when he fights at 170. What I look more for is when, when guys cut a lot of weight or girls cut a lot of weight, females cut a lot of weight, is that I want to see if they don't put more on trying to gain an advantage. They, whatever weight they train at is the weight that they should be fighting at. Because that extra pound, I was trying to give the analogy of, if you've trained for a marathon and you normally are running, you know, you're, you're running, your weight class is normally like 160, and I'm running 20 miles at 160, weighing 160 pounds. Well, I don't go and put on two more pounds and carry that for a marathon, and that's kind of what they're doing in this fight. And if you run only 20 miles, you don't finish the marathon, by the way. Yeah, yeah, that's why I don't run that. <laughs> by the way. <laughs> it just makes more sense to take the car, don't you, Josh? <laughs> Lima has been successful in landing a couple of those lower leg kicks, but you've also seen that Musasi has been able to block several, check them, which is causing pain to Douglas Lima's leg. He's got those fingers, he's got those fingers locked. Lima is doing a great job separating the legs, which is actually pulling on the fingers of Gegard, so it's harder for him to get the takedown. Those chest kicks, Lima acknowledged that he was ready to encounter that pain, if you will, in this fight against Musasi. Hurts both guys. One of the things that you're looking at the you know, comparison, when Gegard Musasi he fought Roy McDonald and they met in the center and there was an exchange. It was immediate that you saw that Gegard looked at Roy like, you can't hurt me. He has not made that same determination with Douglas Lima. He has given a lot of feints. He's been very careful in what he's doing, so he's giving Lima a lot of respect. He's felt a little bit of that Lima power, though, too, as well. I think he thought he'd be able to manhandle Lima around like he did Roy McDonald. It's not happening the same. I would like to see Lima be a little bit more active, like one or two more punches, not just one at a time pot shots. Set for the start of round uh, number round three. Four. Big John, after two, your scorecard. Right now, after two, I've got Musasi up. Two rounds to none. It's not that Douglas Lima hasn't landed some shots. He's just not throwing enough. He needs to get busier. He needs to start throwing more combinations and landing more shots. Which is pretty much what Juan Carnero said while we were in break in the corner. Start fighting your fight. 
Yeah, because what happened you saw a little bit of the same lean on when he fought Rory McDonald the first time. He was hesitant, he was Rory McDonald. And then he realized halfway through the fight that this guy, I can beat this guy. And so, but by then it was a little bit too late. Yep. And then we fought the second fight. He fought a smarter fight, but he also landed and did more, had more output, and ended up beating Roy McDonald to win the tournament. Way more output, won every round. Won every round of that fight because he was dominant as far as he initiated, and he's not initiating in this fight. He needs to start throwing. also might be a little, maybe get into his mind a little bit, because he's landing some really clean leg shots and calf kicks in this fight so far. And you'll see, you haven't seen any wind scene or any stepping or switching up stance from Gegard. And he just threw that leg that he's been attacking up to his head. Right now, there's no effect shown any of those leg kicks that have landed. That was probably the first effect right there that you've seen. Douglas, talk to us about how he thinks Gegard may look for takedowns off his kicks. We'll see as the fight continues. Don't forget when we are done, it's college football time here on CBS Sports Network. Ooh, that was just right outside there. Just missed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It still is Gegard Mousasi controlling the center of the cage. Gegard has been the guy that has been dictating this fight. That's what you want to see from Douglas Lima. Again, right to the body, back to the head. That's the output that Douglas needs to maintain. But what you also have to understand is when fighters put weight on, and sure, maybe this is what he normally walks around at, but when fighters put weight on, they're not also used to fighting at a fight pace, carrying this amount of weight. So he may be a little concerned about getting tired in the championship rounds. Whoa, he, he talked about that before in his career, and he said, you know, I'm done worried about, worrying about getting tired. I'm just gonna go. If I'm tired, that means my opponent's gonna be tired. And that's exactly what he's gotta do right now in this fight. You can see the difference here in the strikes per round. In round one, 41-3, 13-7, 9-7. That's a huge difference in the amount of strikes being thrown, John. Well, a lot of those in the first rounds because when Gegard took him down, he landed a lot of shots from Lima's guard. They're getting them more even as they're in the stand-up. But again, it's always Gegard who's initiating for the most part. First fight in over a decade at 185 for the welterweight champion, Douglas Lima. Musazi has won titles at 85 and 205. He beat Mark Hunt at heavyweight. He did, he submitted Mark Hunt. Took Mark Hunt down, used the ground game that he's so good with, got the submission. Gegard has fought a who's who in the sport of MMA. And John, you were in there for that one in strike force against Babalu. Oh my God, he was he was so calm, so relaxed, and didn't even breathe hard throughout the fight. It wasn't that long, and Babalu was a great fighter, a great ground technician, and Gegard just showed how superior he was at that time. John, no matter what happens, and Golden, I'm talking to you also. I'm right here. You guys need to understand, this is very impressive. Even though he's not doing the output, Douglas is not giving the output that he should be giving to win this fight. But the fact is, is that Gegard is showing him the amount of respect that he deserves because he possesses that type of power he just saw right there. Throwing. There's no doubt, Lima's got power, man. He has hurt too many people, not too many people out. He has proved that he can put you out with one shot. And I'm sure that Gegard felt that power and said, I gotta be careful, but, He's got to throw to land that knockout shot. Now, John, could the plan be conservation that leads to conquer? Absolutely it could. You know, so many times you, you look and guys have game plans and you think, you know, hey man, you know, you're taking a lot of shots, you're really not doing a whole lot. 
and they're waiting and they're saying, I know what I'm doing. And then fourth round comes and they start turning it on. And that's what we can see right now because you can look at look at Lima's diaphragm. It's not even moving. He's not tired. Not at all. Championship rounds. The former Bellator middleweight champion in the red gloves, the reigning welterweight champion in the blue gloves. There's one of those high kicks that Douglas Lima told us to look out for. That was a nice kick. Landed cleanly to the side of Gegard's body. Just got to see a little bit more output from Douglas Lima because he's, he's had success when he is thrown. But I think that's why he's a little hesitant. He understands Gegard is fully looking for the takedown. Seventh straight five round fight for Lima. Four of the last five have gone to the fifth round. He submitted Korshkov three minutes into the fifth in the first fight of the welterweight World Grand Prix. That was a beautiful step behind by Musasi. Elevates Lima. Nice job by Lima. That position's real hard to hold when you're a little sweaty, especially when you got the sweat going. But even here, Lima's got to be busier. Knees to the body, knees to the calves. He was throwing a little hill strike from here to the calf and the thigh as well. He just got to stay busier because Gegard's winning the position, the head position here, which is keeping him pressed against the fence. Head position is everything right now. Gegard is using that head as a third arm. It's forcing Douglas's head off to the side. It makes him a little weaker, and it opens up Gegard's attacks. For those of you guys watching at home, this is exactly though how Gegard, he'll normally press and push harder in fights, but this is the style. He looks very relaxed, composed. Nothing that his opponents does shocks him or impresses him. So I think this is a big reason why he doesn't get the recognition he deserves. He's honestly, technically, one of the best in the game. That last kick did a little damage because you saw Gegard think about switching his stance for a half second, John. You're absolutely right, man. You can see, there he goes again. Switches back to southpaw, which is telling you, I'm feeling that leg. So what Douglas Lima has been doing, it's starting to have that effect. Look at the lump yes, on Gegard's That left leg has got damage. You can see it. He's still using it. But the same as we saw with Rory McDonald, Lima's kicks are fast and heavy. I mean, in the Roy McDonald fight, he had taken so much damage to the leg and tore the meat right off the bone. Tore the muscle off the bone. He will never be the same fighter in taking to any leg kicks. You're Douglas Lima. You know it's time to turn it up. He's looking to hit that same exact spot over and over. He is, and as Gegard comes forward, he, he should just, he's got to start opening up with his hand. Follow his hand with that kick, and it's going to land a lot more effectively. Just that step that you saw Gegard take with that leg, you saw a little buckle. And that's because he's having a hard time actually feeling the normal way when you take that step. It's feeling heavy, it's feeling swollen, it's hurt, it's having an effect on it. Now you can see the hematoma on Gegard's leg. 
I'm sitting here in case they're right in front of us right now. It's enormous. Boa, dog. Vambora. Vera segunda, vera segunda. Vira segunda. Under 30 seconds on the clock here in round four. When he hides his kick behind the, the punches, the whole point so much harder though. Exactly, that's the whole point. If he would throw his hands and then bring the kick, hide that kick behind the hands, he's gonna be more effective. But John, he's done all that damage with not hiding his hands. Hiding his kick behind the hands. You were hurting him at times with those kicks. Start bringing your hands in, start bringing the kick up high. You gotta go. So you have a 3 1. I do. Score, score, you guys can touch gloves. All right, back it up a little bit, back it up, back it up. Back Five up, back up. minutes remain. All right, final round, let's go. Moussasi in the red, Lima in the blue. The winner is the Bellator middleweight world champion. Gagar Musasi has gone the full 25 minutes three times. He is 0-3 in those fights. Oh, he didn't want to hear that. Well, <laughs> he may not. That might not be the case if it goes the distance this time. Thus my point. They are hard, but man. It, and this is what, right now, this is what he wanted to see from Douglas from the start, though. He's being aggressive. He's trying to land the heavy shots. John, I truly believe it was just a confidence thing. Now he's in the fourth and the fifth round. It's a little, I feel like it's a little too late unless he gets the finish here. But I think he finally is feeling like, you know what? I'm fine. I, I belong here. I can do this. He's just got to go. 56th pro fight tonight for Musasi. He's been knocked out once, submitted three times. That's it, Stop. four times. The other two setbacks by the Notice that right now, Douglas Lima is finally back to get guard up. He's still being careful as far as going too fast forward. He doesn't want to get stuck in a takedown attempt. He's just got to go, John. I can sit here and tell you all day long. He's just got to go, man. When you throw, you have success. Throwing and being on fences, sometimes that's your best defense. You make your opponent stop their offensive progression and it gives you opportunities. And not all fighters can fight as the way And those three decisions were in five round fights. King Mo, Leota Machida at 185 in a non title fight, and the former champion Rafael Lovato Jr. I can guarantee there's going to be a large bucket of ice going up to Gegard Musasi's room after this fight. That leg is not feeling good. Pats the midway point of the fifth and final round. All Douglas Lima has to do, though, Goldie and John, is he's just got to pull the trigger more and setting up his kicks with his punches or setting up his punches with his kicks. Throw the kick, come back with, with some punches. He's got to mix it up and also go to the head as well with his kicks. When you've got a kick that's that heavy, it's, not, it's okay to go to the head. Those gloves will not protect your head as we saw earlier with the Bobby Volker fight. What I'm seeing right now is he has Gegard in a position where Gegard's balance is, has been compromised. His ability to move out of the way of shots, his ability to accept those shots is not the same. So now's your chance to open up and go. He cannot respond with counters in the same fashion. That's what he was afraid of, I think. And like I said, the fight IQ of Gegard Musasi has been shown right there. Douglas Lehman needs to be very careful. He doesn't get stuck in a bomb flu here. Good job. He gets his hand off of the head. But now he needs to get himself off of the ground. That's no easy task, John. No, not, not with the guy that he's got on top of. 
That takedown occurred though, John, because he had to set up the kick with his strikes. So what he did was he waited for Gegard to come in and try to get him on the step, and he ended up closing too much distance. Gegard was able to capture the leg and take him down from that position. Thirty seconds to and now you're seeing him is the guy that's throwing shots. Gegard has not done any type of striking on the ground so far. That's the first one he's thrown. Here's the computer. They go the distance. Gegard, Musasi, and Douglas Lima. This is first round. This is when Gegard got that takedown and did a lot of good work on the ground. He landed good elbows, good punches, even a couple head strikes to the chest that are illegal. But it was Douglas Lima trying to stay on his feet, landing those kicks to the outside of the calf and the inside of the other leg. He was very effective and started to change the fight in the fourth and fifth round. Then in the fifth round, this takedown right here by Gegard kind of took all the steam out of that fight and Lima's ability to do damage. For those of you tuning in for Colorado State, Fresno State, we're just moments away as we await the decision of our main event. Then we'll continue our post-fight coverage and interview the new middleweight world champion over on the Bellator YouTube channel. Take a look at the final numbers. Gegard Musasi had a definitive advantage in that first five minutes, Josh. Lima closed the gap but probably not enough. Yeah, the advantage was, was that he just had more output, and that's all it was, which led to the takedowns against Douglas Lima, and I feel like that's what solidified this fight, especially in the fifth round when he got that final takedown. Those four takedowns, the difference in this matchup, Gegard Musasi said, I will utilize my wrestling, I will try to time my takedowns off of kicks, and there was a huge takedown scored by Musasi in the fifth, and final round. Michael C. Williams will tell us who our new middleweight champion is. Ladies and gentlemen, this world title fight, we go to your judges scorecards. Your first judge, Jaron Bilal, scores it 48-47, while judges Doug Crosby, David Torelli, both see it the same, 49-46. I'll have it for the winner by unanimous decision, the new and now two-time Bellator middleweight world champion, Gegard Musasi. Gegard Musasi, once again, the Bellator middleweight world champion. All it comes down to is fight IQ. He used all the tools in his toolbox where Douglas Lima was just trying to use one and trying to pick and choose his shots, and it didn't work to his advantage tonight. Congratulations to Gegard. Gegard Musasi with a huge win. Bellator 250 has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network. For Michael C. Williams, Jay Glazer, Chael Sonnen, Jen Brown, Josh Thompson, and Big John McCarthy, Mike Goldberg saying so long until we see you right back here inside the Bellator cage. Time now for college football. Colorado State at Fresno State. Here's Ben Holden and Ross Tucker. We remain here on our Bellator YouTube channel. Big John with the champion. Gegard, first thing I want to say is congratulations on being a two-time middleweight world champion here. That was an outstanding performance, a very tough performance, but you fought very smart, very calculated throughout that. 
First round, you got the big takedown and did some damage. Was that your plan throughout the fight? Well, first of all, I want to dedicate this fight to my country, who's in a war right now. I also want to remind you that we're not going to be able to do this. We're going to be able to do this. We're going to I hope there will be peace soon. And to my friend Abdullah, my best friend actually, my brother, who lost his dad and helped me for this training. Uh, this for you, brother. And uh, my coaches, my friends, who also couldn't come. Thank you. And uh, what was the question? I forgot. <laughs> we, we talk about the takedown, and it looked like in the first round you went yeah. after that takedown. You went after it a couple of times. You got it several times in the fight, but. How tough was it to take Douglas Lima down? Well, uh, I didn't want to waste too much energy, so I, I felt like I was winning the round. He wasn't pushing really the pace. I was pushing him backward. So I was scoring the round, so I didn't feel like necessary to take him down. Of course, at the end, I thought, well, it's maybe good because his last round, he's behind, he will come. So take down to secure the round and uh, get the win. You were touching that leg after the fight. Yeah. How much damage did he do with that low leg kick? Well, last round, he hurt me a couple of times. I had a poker face, but he really hurt me. Well, tough, tough. I think uh, Douglas Lima is in his prime. So, uh, and he looked big. He didn't look like a welterweight. So uh, I fought smart. I knew I had the technical advantage. I could mix it with the takedowns. So he's difficult to put away. I think any other guy, maybe I would have finished. But with him, I knew his game. He's experienced, he paces himself, so, yeah. <laughs> it was an outstanding performance overall, and the one thing that we saw is your fight IQ was keeping you calm and patient throughout the fight, and making him fight to your pace, your distance, you were crushing that space, was that part of the game plan? Yeah, I didn't uh, take any unnecessary risk, because then you close, he's very wild with his hooks, one, one punch can finish it, so. I was scoring with the jab, I knew I had the four rounds at least, and the last round I secured takedown. So I cruised to the victory, but you can never count out the guy. He's a, he's a phenomenal fighter. He is a phenomenal fighter, and so are you. Congratulations you, on your second now title hold of the Bellator Middleweight Championship. Can't wait to watch you fight Thank again. You, Thank you. Back to you, Goldie. Well, as you Thank just you. pointed out, Morrow, with my tail of the tape here for this middleweight world championship fight, 47-72. We're talking about wins against all kinds of champions across the board, but John Salter is finally getting his chance at that title. 18 and four, only one time has he gone the complete distance. With the official introductions for tonight's Bellator Middleweight Championship bout, here is Michael C. Williams. Bellator MMA live on Showtime from Mohegan Sun Arena. The time has come for tonight's main event. Five five-minute rounds for the Bellator Middleweight World Championship. Sanctioned by the Mohegan Tribe Department of Athletic Regulation, Chairman James Gester, President of Sports and Entertainment, Mr. Tom Cantone, Chief of Mohegan Tribe, Lynn Minerva, and Supervising at Cage Side, Director Mike Mazzulli. And now, first introducing the Blue Corner. At six foot one, weighing in 185 pounds. As the number one ranked contender, he enters with 18 professional victories for losses fighting out of Wilmington, North Carolina, presenting the challenger, John Sutton. And across the cage, the champion tonight fights out of the red corner at six foot two, weighing in 185 pounds. The six time world champion tonight makes his first defense after regaining Bellator gold. His professional record remarkable at 47 victories, just seven defeats with two draws, fighting out of Amsterdam, Netherlands, the defending Bellator middleweight world champion, Gagar. And when the bell rings, the referee in charge, Dan Mergliata. All right, gentlemen, the center, please. All right, guys, been through the rules of the locker room. Want to pay my commands at all time. Want to take yourselves at all time. Great job, gentlemen. Good luck, both of you. Dan Mergliata set to officiate tonight's main event for the Bellator Middleweight Championship. Gegard Mousasi, now a two-time champion. 
in this division against John Salter. Uh, racer. Eight and racer. one in Bellator round with one, one knockout and six submissions. The bell in round one, the champion Musasi in the red gloves, the challenger, the southpaw Salter in the blue gloves. And Musasi told me prior to tonight's fight that he was going to, quote, bulldoze Salter, close quote. He told me something very similar. <laughs> New York. We'll see if he can do it because John Salter oh, he's is, not an easy out. is a terror for everyone because he's so good at getting you to the ground and then dominating you on the ground. Gegard Musasi has got to be careful. 26 of Musasi's 47 victories have been via form of knockout. Salter was TKO once against Gerald Harris in a UFC fight back in January of 2010 as Musasi moves forward. Nice one-two combination, but it is the hand speed of Musasi where I see a big difference in the stand-up. He is known for his hand speed. He's got a very fast and sharp jab that he utilizes quite frequently. go back to his fight against Roy McDonald and you can see the difference in speed and look at how good takedown defense being exhibited by Musasi. It was good, he stopped it, but you saw that John Salter did not just go with one attempt. He continued forward and gets the takedown. We'll see what he can do with it. Salter began training jiu-jitsu at the age of 21 as a black belt. Also, Competed in the ADCC 2017 World Championship when that's the highest level of grappling, John. Absolutely, and you see Salter doing a very nice job of keeping that leg of Gegard Musasi up so he cannot use it to get himself back to his feet. He's got to free that leg. Salter's six submission victories in Bellator middleweight competition are the most in divisional history. Musasi has been submitted three times in his career. And this right here is just a chess match of Musasi trying to keep his hips up against the cage while Salter wants to bring his hips off of it so he can put his back down onto the canvas. It's been nearly seven years since Musasi was submitted. That came against Ronaldo Jacare Souza. They uh, split fights and uh, want to wish Jacare all the best in his future endeavors, having retired from the sport of MMA, a former Strike Force champion. Recently just retired, fantastic fighter, fantastic person. Going back to the world of BJJ. Musasi wanting to get back up to a vertical base. Salter looking to take his back, maintaining hold on his foot. Notice him controlling that ankle. Basic wrestling right there. You keep that person's foot from being able to be planted on the ground. He cannot have a base. And this is what John Salter does. Notice how he has now just systematically gotten himself towards the back of Gegard Musasi. He's still not in a position to even think about getting the submission, but position before submission, and that's what John Salter is doing. And years ago, a grappling heavy strategy was the probably the easiest way to beat Musasi, but that hasn't been the case in recent times. Now, the one thing about Gegard, he is very underrated in his ground game. His ground game is outstanding, especially from the top position. And he knew that coming into this, that Salter was gonna work at getting him down, and he could not allow himself to just accept the position. He had to always work towards getting himself back to his feet and away from John Salter. It was Musasi's older brother who got him training and grappling after Musasi started with judo and boxing as a child. Then Musasi on his feet, coming up on the final minute of the opening round as Salter continues to control from behind. Looking to take Musasi to the canvas. Musasi fighting the hands, trying to turn into John Salter. That's a good move by Musasi, but with Salter's hands, if he can get them together, he can get that takedown again. Musasi has 12 submissions. And right now, just trying to create some form of separation, break the grip of John Salter. With 30 seconds left in the round. That was a nice, nice size. Very nice knee by Musasi, and what he's doing right now, he's making John Salter work. It's not exciting for anyone, but John is working really hard at trying to get these takedowns and keep him down. That's going to play out as this fight goes longer. Elbow 
Powerful strike by Musasi as the first round comes to a close. Right clean, looks like. All right, second round, let's go, guys. Bell, round two. Based on what you saw in that opening five minutes, how do you have it on your unofficial scorecard? Based on what I saw, the, probably the best strike landed was John Salter. He had the control of it. I give the round 10-9 to John Salter. A more aggressive Gegard Musasi starting here in round two, although he gets clipped by the left from Salter. He does, but one thing that's going to change, look at how sweaty both guys are now. All those submissions. Right hand lands for Musasi. All those submissions that John likes to go after, it's going to be very hard to hold on. Great point. Hit the takedown against Gegard Musasi. John needs to move his feet in those situations. If you're gonna move, I want you to move either laterally, left or right, and think of your counter strikes. Don't just go backwards. Minute gone here in the second. Musasi stalking Salter. Salter blocks that kick. I mean, that's a Musasi smart with a straight left. What you saw with the high kick from Musasi, that's a smart move by Musasi because John has got to block that. He can't take the chance of trying to slip it and hitting him in the head. So it holds him in a position where he's not going to be able to catch the leg and he's going to end up either blocking or eating the strike. Salt Salter leads with the left. Minute and a half gone in the second. Musasi allowing Salter to move to his right, reset. John is just looking for that moment where he can change levels and get into the hip structure of Gegard Musasi. He's just not finding that timing right now. Musasi walking down Salter. Straight left. That High kick again by Musasi. Two minutes gone here in the second round. See, right, this is the type of fight that will wear John Salter out. Pressure by Musasi. Exactly, relentless pressure, and it makes it to where John's not comfortable. When you're not comfortable in the fight, you tend to burn energy. There is the takedown attempt, and Musasi stops the takedown, but the tenacious Salter continues to secure it, and does so. One for three. And that was half of a round with Gegard Musasi landing a lot of clean, crisp striking. We'll see what John Salter can do from the grappling position. Officially the second takedown secured by John Salter. <laughs> Musasi just sitting down, not wanting to Try to wall walk now, trying maybe to do so. He's gonna try to wall walk, but he, he knows right now that John wants to pull his hips off of that cage. Pull the hips off so I can swing you around and get your back onto the canvas. That's why Gegard is using that fence as a balance point. Landing little strikes. Here you're seeing Salters trying to bring those legs together so he can get his hands together. This is very exhausting by John Salter. If he gets this, that's good for him, but if he doesn't, it's gonna start to demoralize him as far as it burned a lot of energy and ended up with nothing. And that elbow strike that you're looking at, that's super important for Gegar Masasi to go back to that, because that will make John Salter bring his hand off of the leg up to protect his head. Musasi continues to defend now in top position with Salter on his back. Musasi posturing up, final minute of the second. Piston leg left hand by Musasi, stacking Salter against the fence. And this right here, you know, people look and they think, you know, John Salter great on the ground. Well, trust me, in the top position, Gegard Musasi is a monster. He wants to jackhammer those punches from distance. He's got great hips. Watch how he'll bring the hip pressure forward. And then he brings heavy strikes down. Right now, John Salter is starting to eat a lot of shots. Musasi looking to want to deliver on another prediction I heard him make that he would stop it in the second round. 20 seconds left. Musasi ground and pound on the challenger, John Salter. 
This is Gage, this is classic Gegard Musasi. The dream catcher looking to smash the dreams of the number one contender. Strong finish to round two for the Bellator middleweight champion. The grueling action through the first right, two ready? rounds Let's of go, tonight's fight. main event. Gegard Mousasi used to sweating excellence, both of them dripping in sweat and finesse. John Salter, again, a guy who always determined to get the finish. And John, we have it on your on the screen. You have it 19-19 after two rounds one. I think because I gave John Salt for the first because he landed a couple of good strikes, the knee strike, and had the positioning with the grappling. The grappling took place more than anything, so he got the round 10 9. Gegard Musasi definitely won the second round because bigger, of that. Bigger than John Salt won the first, but it's still a 10 9. I have it as an even fight. Yeah, because of the numbers you just saw on your screen, one way traffic in terms of offensive strikes landed by Musasi in round two, and he continues to hunt down the number one contender. Salter. Salter looks for the takedown. Blocked again by Musasi. Stonewall that attempt right there. Beautiful job by Musasi. All those attempts as John Salter starts to shoot those shots and they don't work. It's just going to start to be in the cup, this tidal wave that works against it. Salter now two for five in the takedown department. Not surprisingly, Musasi yet to attempt a takedown. But he has a huge advantage in terms of punches thrown and landed. Nice shot, actually, by John Sullivan. But look who ends up in the top position. And that's because John's getting tired. He has put a lot of energy in trying to get Gegard down to the mat. It didn't work for him in the second round. And now he's got a lot of time that he's got to work right here to get himself out of this bad position. Musasi looking to perhaps secure mount on Salter instead just plaps him on the ground delivering a steady diet of right hand some of them sneaking through this guard of Salter referee on top of the action. It's a championship fight but John's got to do something to stop what Gegard's doing. The Musasi onslaught ends with Gegard Musasi successfully beginning his record second Bellator middleweight title reign with a successful title defense, stopping John Salter and salting away the victory with some extra pepper on those punches. Yes, I've been waiting all night long to say it, John. Well, what, what Gegard did is he just showed you what a true professional and a guy that understands fighting remains so calm during moments where people think he's that's in trouble. his older brother there. Yep. Man instrumental for getting him into the martial arts. Absolutely, but Gegard is calm throughout, and that helps with his energy. He's amazing when you look at what he can do against really good fighters because he is just exceptional. Musashi living up to his promise of getting the stoppage. Watch this, he just stonewalls that attempt by John Salter. And like I said, now that he's a little slippery, it makes it so much harder. Salter goes in on the leg, but ends up where he gets turned based upon the arm position of Gegard. Gegard just starts to open up with elbows. Look at the difference, look at the posture. See how he's got distance? Distance equals escape. But when you're John and Salter power. and you're tired, for Gegard, it's meaning power. He's putting big, heavy shots on him. Salter can do nothing to stop the attack, and referee Dan Mergulata brings it into it. So Gegard Musasi delivering on his promise to get the stoppage, and now showing respect to John Salter in his camp. Salter now 18 and 5, 8 and 2 in Bellator. His three fight win streak comes to an end. Already reflecting on what transpired in tonight's main event, but for Gegard Musasi again, both these fighters 36 years of age. For Musasi, he now has recorded his 48th win, 27th via form of knockout, and he maintains his hold on the Bellator middleweight gold.
Here's Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, due to unanswered strikes, referee Dan Bergliata steps in to wave off the contest officially. Two minutes, seven seconds into round number three. The winner by TKO and still Bellator middleweight world champion, Geiko Musasi. One of the greatest mixed martial artists ever. Gegard Mousasi begins his second title reign successfully here tonight in the main event of Bellator 264. Here's Big John McCarthy. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here with your winner and still the middleweight champion of the world, Gegard Mousasi. Congratulations on a beautiful performance, but a performance when you were taken down in the first round. You kept your calm, but how frustrated were you in trying to get up? Well, I think I could have uh, gotten up, but uh, I didn't want to put myself into risk. He's still fresh, uh, not slippery, not sweaty, so I didn't want to give him my back. So I felt like I was pressuring his head down, so I knew conditioning was uh, on my side. Let's talk about the pressure you brought in the stand-up, though, because you were bringing that forward pressure and you were landing crisp jabs, hard right hands, Talk about what he was taking in there. Well, he's a southpaw. Uh, everything is more difficult. So uh, it was a little bit more difficult to pass, uh, get my punches in. But uh, other than that, I felt good. <laughs> you look good. You said you were going to stop it in the second round. You went to the third, so a little bit off on the mystic part. But let's talk about the finish, because it was your ability to posture up and bring a lot of power down that made referee Dan Merglata stop that fight. Yeah, I, I told him from before, I'm, I'm way stronger than people think. And uh, maybe I look skinny, but I'm uh, a lot stronger. So physically, I was the stronger guy there. So on top, I felt like just pressure him, put my weight on him, hurt him with punches, make him pull, uh, feel the pressure. And uh, it was a five-rounder. So in my mind, I'm saying, OK, don't do everything now, because you can go five. Well, congratulations on another title defense, your second reign as the Bellator champion. I'm going to bring in the man that's going to be your next opponent, Mr. Austin Vanderford. Austin, what did you think of that performance by Gegard? Hey, man, he's a legend in the sport. Uh, I thought he went in there and, and took care of business, and I'm excited to get out there and test myself. Ladies and gentlemen, soon the next middleweight championship fight, your champion, Gegard, the dream catcher, Musasi, against Austin. Vanderford. A huge cap in experience, of course. Austin Vanderford undefeated at 11 and 0, and will next get an opportunity to challenge for the Bellator middleweight championship as he looks to dethrone one of the best the sport has ever seen in Gegard, the dream catcher, Musasi.